what's the message for us around this? Well, it is, it is the burden she gave me was to tell what it, I know. She didn't tell me what to say other than the world needs to know that we're real. They're going to wake us up. And uh, there's going to be a new way about uh, looking at humanity and about, you know, for example, evolution. They're teaching that nonsense in school and have been for many, many years. And how that is the worst lame excuse anyone can have. Hi everyone, this is Holly Hall from The Holly Hall Show, and I am so excited today. I have Chris Bledsoe. He has written the book, and he was just explaining to me that he's got to rewrite it again in all these different languages because it's become that popular. I found him on Regina Meredith's show, which you guys can all find on Gaia TV, but I also follow her on YouTube, and that's where she was interviewing him. And I reached out to him because all, all of you know, I'm a big fan of aliens and that we don't always come from um, from Earth when uh, we reincarnate, but also angels and guides. And we're going to be talking about that, too. I want to ask Chris, what is the difference between uh, aliens or angels or guides? I super encourage you guys to read his book, UFO of God. I found it on Audible. I, to be honest with you, I'm not a big book reader, so I'm, I'm a big YouTuber and following. I I've, I feel like I know you, Chris, because I've seen so many of your interviews because I started researching you. And then, honestly, you've got to read this book. I couldn't I couldn't stop. Like I was listening to it as I was driving, as I go on my walks and my hikes and everything. And I couldn't stop. Like I'd go on a two hour hike because I was like, I got to keep listening to this. <laughs> What's going to happen next? It's so exciting. But it doesn't come without its its pain and its angst. And I want you guys, I want my audience to really see that fame uh, and having a mission and a purpose like Chris has been given is not always easy. Not easy at all. I mean, some of what he's gone through, I don't even, I mean, you must have had a higher power by your side because i don't know how you did it i mean this is almost broke up a marriage it it was difficult on his family and you guys are going to hear this story now you can find his book on amazon i found it on audible again it's it's a page turner you just can't put it down and um it's his entire life i mean this doesn't this didn't just happen this happened many years ago and there was a story prior to that too which we're going to talk about and i got so many questions for you chris i don't know where i'm going to start but first i'd like you to give the audience sort of a reader's digest version of what does ufo of god mean and how did that happen to you um Thank you for having me, Holly. Um, I'm honored. Uh, um, UFO of God. That, uh, if, if you read the book, it'll come natural to you. Um, it, it, the reason that I put that title on there is basically uh, I've had a, a um, I, I've had a, a, a lifelong um, journey i might say that has been bizarre and strange with a lot of injuries and being shot in the back with a shotgun to breaking my back or spine fracturing my spine i didn't break it but i fractured it and there's much more um and i i i just had to to draw closer to the heavens to try to figure out why me lord why is all these bizarre things happening to me is something trying to end my life am i not supposed to be here is there something i supposed to do one day i used to think this as a little kid you know catching fire at two years old i nearly if my grandfather hadn't caught gotten me i'd have probably not been here or in a lot worse shape today but um in 2007 January the 8th of 07 is, is the reason the title for the book. I was, I was um, at the bottom of my 
barrel, you might say. I was ready to give up on life. I had dealt with Crohn's disease and for 17 and a half years, extremely sick. Uh, so bad that, uh, you know, Crohn's is an intestinal disease, stomach problems. And I was at, at during that time in 04, 03, 02, 05, I was in the bathroom 20 times a day. It was that bad, debilitating, unable to work. I'd get up to go to work and five minutes later, I'm back at the house. And so the last two years before we sold our company in 05, I was bedridden and, um, uh, so I'd lost everything I had all my uh, life. I had been a builder for 20 years or more, I'm building 100 homes a year, anywhere from starting out at 40 and 50, going upwards of 100, 130. Pretty consistent. And the World Trade Center disaster put a nail in my coffin in a military town. It shut the building business down. And Long story short, fast forward to 07, I was uh, thinking the unthinkable, ready to give up, unable to work, unable to buy my children's school lunches. I had to apply for free lunch and, and living in a million dollar home, right? That's how bad it got. So I was I was crying out to the heavens and it had been for weeks. Lord, what I do. So my whole life had turned into basically a conversation with God, whoever that is, you know, and I felt like nobody was listening. <clears throat> so that day on, I'd take my son fishing and two, three other guys that had worked for us. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, I wasn't fishing. I was walking along just meditating, crying out in pain and wanting relief. I, I don't want to live anymore. These are the things I was saying, but I love my wife and children and I don't ever want to lose them. Help me, what do I do? And I had no idea these big, three big fiery, some call them UFOs. And that's why I put that title in there. But um, I was crying out to God. I won't cry out to aliens. I mean, who'd yeah. ever think? Why would an alien care about what I think? And about me crying out for, for help, Lord, help me. Why would an alien? So it never computed with me. I've never had an alien experience. I've never seen or been taken by flying saucers. Did you ever was, think about aliens? Did you believe in aliens? No, you... no I didn't believe no, in No, I wouldn't aliens. think so. Um, the heavens opened up or the, the UFOs came, but they were balls of fire, three of them. And uh, three is a big number, always three, yeah. always. On the cover of my book, you'll see this orb. This It's on the front with three dots in it. Uh, we've seen those orbs just like that all the time. And with the dots, believe it or not, inside one particular night, one was hovering over the house about 20 feet around and it had those three dots in it but um yeah i was crying out to to whoever's up there and these three fiery balls came and when they took me for four hours and brought me back i had no more crohn's disease it was gone and today i drink coffee i eat and drink anything i want i've never taken medicine for it ever again i mean totally about face change and you know, that's when you would have thought that everyone would have been happy for me. But being from a religious community and part of the country, uh, all of a sudden hell set in. I come home talking about these UFOs that saved me. They were unidentified, right? But they were, they were like the chariots of fire you hear about in the Bible. But no, they didn't want any part of that. It was the devil himself. And... I had, uh, I was not good for my family, the, my children, they were interfering with my wife and my family, almost like this, to get them away from me, and they were bringing holy water to my house, and and so then it got worse, it got worse, Holly, I mean, and uh, the book spells it all out. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's horrible. And then, yeah. you know, it goes to show you that location, 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 because as soon as you found your people 
that also had experiences similar or in tandem that you had, your whole world opened out. Yeah, it, it was actually, yeah, it was actually the government that opened my world up. Um, yeah, because you UFO, contacted MUFON. Yeah, I did. I contacted them, and that was a nightmare. I guess if I, I had know, to do it I was again, very disappointed when I heard, when I read that in the book. Very disappointed in MUFON. Yeah, but they tried to debunk the whole thing, and it backfired on them. Yeah, the never, channel you got on, which everybody would think, oh, great, this is going to give you world renowned, you know, validation. Vindication. That's what yeah. it told me. Yeah. And it was quite the uh, total opposite. And that brought. This is what mainstream media can family. do, people. Yeah. Be careful. It, brought, it brought a disaster into my family to where now not only was the church and all. And several churches giving me a hard time, but the whole community now. And they labeled me crazy, everything in the book. And um, so, and Mufon had created this fear in our family about the government. They'll kill you. The men in black, they'll come and they'll shoot you, kill you, destroy you. You can't talk about it. And so the first scientists that showed up at my house was nasa and all of a sudden my whole family's afraid that um you know we're in trouble because the government's come but it turned quite the opposite to where they were the only ones that were here to help they they made um they, yeah. my friend hal pavenmeyer he loved my family and children he was from nasa and he he went next door to my moms and dads and said look pulled his badge out and said, I'm from NASA. Your son's telling the truth. You have to listen to him. And it was that kind of thing that kept happening over the years by government people that uh, vindicated me and um, and basically to the whole world now. I mean, they're behind me. The, the CIA is, I'm very close friends. I got a call with some of them tomorrow. Uh, just wonderful people that uh, have come out. But when I came home, the phenomena followed me home and began to appear inside the house, uh, all over above the house, uh, out in the yard. My wife and children were seeing it with me. And, um, and at that time in my life, I couldn't ever get a photo of it or share a picture of it or, or anything my children except with my family and then it progressed into me being able to film it and um, have a conversation and a connection and interaction with the phenomena i mean contact you hear the movie contact or you hear these guys on tv oh i'm a whistleblower i saw a ufo big deal we're we're communicating with them we're seeing them we're filming them and we do yeah. it with dozens and dozens of people along with government officials. So you don't hear much about that. We've been quietly studying it for 15 years, 16 years. And I have amassed oh, thousands, I know, yeah. thousands of videos and eyewitnesses. And it's, it's, uh, we're the most studied case in the world in history from the government and from the academic world because it's ongoing and we can film it most anytime we want. So you, you were taken away for about four hours. You calculated, uh, you don't remember those four hours. You've seen these beings, they're, they're, they're globes of sorts, right? Orbs. Um, yeah. But they telepathically communicate with you. You've yeah. seen the lady, which is, which you see once a year around Easter, right? Yeah, seems well, to be consistent that way. That or her spirit in uh, some form or another. Yes. And in fact, I honestly think that uh, I'm about to go on a, a, a quest. Um, if you read in the book, you'll read about Utah to where I wrote about Utah. And, and that's yeah. kind of where I believe that uh, I need to go there or the four corners area the southwest but utah specifically 
I think I'm going to get to introduce her in a much bigger way through camera. To the world? Uh, to the world, to yeah. To the world? Yeah. Because, you know, in Fatima, she came to the little children of Fatima and then nobody believed her, the, the children. What did the mother say? No. Come out here, no. I think it was October 13th at such and such a time. Tell everybody to come out and we're going to prove them wrong. And that's what she did. She appeared to 80,000 people. So I think there's a good chance that we might get to use technology and she might get to give us a message. So that's my and have a live audience. Yeah. You can get the word out so much more now and you can yeah. have more people than just a town of Fatima um, and see right. it. It'll be the whole world would fly yeah. there to come and see this event. What do you think the message is? Like, what's the message for us around this? Well, it is, it is the burden she gave me was to tell what I know. She didn't tell me what to say other than the world needs to know that we're real. They're going to wake us up and uh, there's going to be a new way about uh, looking at humanity and about, you know, for example, evolution. They're teaching that nonsense in school and have been for many, many years and how that is the worst lame excuse anyone can have to say, you know, evolution, know. you know, an automobile can make itself or any living thing or anything can make itself. Uh, if there's enough time, millions and millions of years, this, this elephant can poof itself into existence. And, and simply the lamest answer, because they have no clue. They have no clue. They're not mm -hmm. willing to address the possibility of uh, a mind that created this race and all these living things. And I think that's what we're going to wake up to. There, there is a real force around us, real living beings that most likely created us all. So I think we're heading. Yeah, there's that a direction. consciousness. There's a, yeah. there's a divine consciousness out there that yeah. co-created all of us. Um, uh, it's interesting that you say that because I just had a debate with somebody on my, um, TikTok at Ask Holly Hall, because that's where you're going to see some clips of this as well. And they said to me, did you ever hear of evolution? You know, like I'm like, I'm dumb. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, do I have a few things to tell you? So I recorded a clip on there that details it all from Greg Braden. I don't know if you're aware of him. He's a Gaia TV as well, too. And he's a hard scientist and a geologist and anthropologist. And he there is a small group of scientists that know that, uh, that Darwin evolution, it might exist in some species, um, but it doesn't for us. <laughs> That's uh, for sure. It's, it's completely ridiculous because what's going to happen, What we're living in a wireless world, wireless communication. We just discovered it, that the creators that created us um, communicate to our system, our body, this whole planet, in wireless ways. Um, for example, yes. I'm privy of a study from NASA and I have the papers. I have sit, I have sat in on some of these meetings, at least one, to where we know that the DNA is transmitting a signal to space on a one, five, six megahertz range, radar range. There's a radar frequency, meaning it sends a signal out and it's pinging something and something's coming back. The light, the green light, this is from NASA, not from me. The green light, which is the center of the color spectrum. The trees are green, grass is green, everything's green, right? Why? Because the light that shines on our earth is at such an angle that it casts a green light onto everything. And it's the aurora borealis. It's green, right? Most of the, mostly green. Yeah. So when the light from this green light shines upon chlorophyll or ADT, which is in plants or hemoglobin, which is same thing in humans. All the encoding from that conscience, that creator is coming through that green light and instantly tells the chlorophyll, okay, activate, start growing. And it gives it all the instructions of how to grow up mm -hmm. and be a plant and create fruits and vegetables and acorns and trees and leaves. And the same with you and I, this this information is coming through that green light 
and uh, I had the study on it for NASA and there's there's plenty of other uh, videos you could probably uh, look up about this but um, yeah there's an intelligent design we're just now figuring it out and that's going to be a, a huge awakening for this world to to rewrite the history books and the textbooks and try to start like babies you know trying to figure all this out we're like we're like toddlers with nothing but diapers on attempting to climb mount everest on our own <laughs> That's, where we That's very well said. You know, the information's already out there, but mainstream, they won't change, they won't change the textbooks. Um, some of them already know, teachers, professors of science, they know that there's advances in yeah. our knowledge, but it, to change all the textbooks and the education and the teachings is just too much for them. They just want to keep with the status quo, right? They want to make us good little soldiers. And... Um, and then just grow up and, you know, be consumers, uh, basically. But so when do you think that this event is going to happen? I know what it says in the book, but I'm going to ask you if it still remains the same. Well, I think it's happening now in a slow motion way. Nothing happens like everybody thinks, oh, my God, the end of the world. Uh, we're going to wake up one day and here it is, you know, but that's not the way this works. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's, it's a, already it's happening. Long the end in the beginning. Yeah, the, the slow motion uh, type thing, train wreck. Over periods of time, we get to those points. But uh, yeah, I, it, it's happening now. And when do you think the lady will appear? Like you had mentioned in Fatima, and you said in Utah that this is where you believe that this will happen. When do you believe that event will happen? Well, it could happen early tomorrow or next month or next week and, and i'm feeling that that pull now more than ever to do this and in fact i'm researching um i'm doing the logistics now to to find a way out there maybe a camper and uh, stay for weeks and weeks until i achieve what it is i'm looking for and this is no new thing i've been saying this for five years now that i'm going to utah and uh, but you know the the lady when I met her the first time that it was actually the second time when she gave me this this strange alignment she said when the red star of Regulus appears on the horizon just before dawn in the gaze of the Sphinx there'll be at that point a new knowledge that will permeate this planet what does that mean I don't know exactly I have no clue. I have an idea what it means. Um, but the red was, star of the red star of what? Regulus. Is there a red? Is there a star called Regulus? Yeah, I'd never heard of such. But when I told my literary agent friend Lisa Hagen, um, she lives up in Virginia. I told her about this, what I was told, and she actually reached out to some of her authors that are in astrology. And they ran the uh, star charts, and it comes out to be Easter of 2026. And so, yes, um, I did the same thing. I didn't use Regulus. I'm a master astrologer, as you know. This is what I do for a living at AskCollyHall.com. And I didn't look at Regulus, so I will look at that. But that makes sense. But I also seen oh, an awakening in August, the third week of August of 2024. Could be, very well, could be, and. and I don't know. I'll tell you this. Um, we're being featured on the History Channel on Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. And it, uh, the episode that we're in is, the, is we're on the last episode. And it'll be uh, August 1st. It may be one more after that. And I may be on that one. I'm not sure yet. But uh, I would say be sure and tune into this if you want to. to um, to see something totally unseen before. Something well, maybe that's connected to what I was saying because this is August 1st. You said this is going to premiere and maybe there'll be some kind of um, uh, a viral effect, you know, weeks throughout the well, weeks to come after that. Very well could be. We'll, we'll know. Uh, I'm going to predict that right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I think it's going to open a lot of eyes when they see this show. Let's, let's yeah. just say there's, there's been a lot of ghost hunting shows and a lot of paranormal shows for the last 30 years. You might see a EF meter or a, a hear a voice or see a little orb in a house or something fly by, but uh, they've never seen anything like they saw when they got. Oh my there. gosh, I'm so excited. I'll tell you about, I can tell you about 50, maybe less than 15 years ago, if somebody asked me if I believe in aliens, I'd be like, no, because I got a bit of a scientific mind. Even though I was studying astrology and I didn't understand how it worked or why it worked, and I know I've done this before because I just picked it up so quick when I was 21, um, I met someone who was a big believer. Actually, I owned a radio station, so I was one of my hosts, and we had long conversations of the experiences he had with aliens. In fact, it, it was hard for him because he didn't really like being on earth <laughs> anymore because the more he knew about other ways and other pe places to live, the more uncomfortable he became with uh, living on earth. And then as I started, you know, seven years ago, I got endorsed by Dr. Shafali. I became quite popular as an astrologer and clairvoyancy came out for me and remote viewing started happening for me. And it was totally accidental. I wasn't trying to do it. And I was like, there is this language, this energy, this power. And if you follow Bruce Lipton, he, epigenetics, he talks about, you know, that we're, we've got everything are just little broadcasters inside of us and everything's happening out, outside of us, not inside of us. We're broadcasting it just like the God energy or the angel energy or the guide energy or however anybody wants to call it. In my book, 101 Answers from the Universe, my first six questions to the universe or source was, is there a God? What is a God? Uh, and at the end of the day, they basically said, we don't care what you call us. We just exist. <laughs> it just is. It's a higher, intelligent, loving power. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, um, I've documented this in such a profound way. Um, there's nobody has the, the, docu the, 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 the amount of evidence that I have. Not even close. Nobody on the planet. Nobody. And this is known by the science and the circles and the people I'm dealing with and friends with. And um, it's not physical aliens in a flying saucer. I've never no. seen or experienced that. No, you've not seen that. You've seen uh, they, well, you've seen little little people though. Oh well, listen. The orbs are entities, beings. They're mm. angelic or celestial beings. I have video of orbs appearing in front of me five feet away with a lady on my right and a lady with cancer on my left arm. And while praying for her, she was afraid she was going to die. She had stage four lung cancer. Fifteen people there in my yard by asking in prayer for her. An orb appears about six foot away maybe five to six, maybe seven foot, guessing face eye level. It approaches us always spinning. They're always rotating, no matter if they're tiny or big as a house. And uh, it flew right up to me and flashed. And when it flashed, and I've seen this more than one time, but I've recorded it. Out of this orb steps this six and a half, seven foot tall glowing white being right in front of me. And it moves to my left in front of this lady next to me. And when she goes in for her scan on Monday, she has no more cancer. You see, she had stage well, four I'll tell you, terminal lung cancer. Wow. I'll tell you, I emailed you about, I know you have arthritis too. And uh, I was born with childhood arthritis and it's pretty much dormant as long as I don't eat dairy and I don't eat a lot of gluten. I'm pretty good. There and all go. of a sudden I was in Mexico for a while. I came back and I got this full blown flare up the worst I ever had. Like I couldn't even, I could hardly even grip a pen. And, um, and you know what that's like. And it was scaring me. I was like, okay, this, please don't let this be what I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. And I reached out to you with the interview and I asked if you could do the healing around that along with my daughter's mental health issues. Um, and it's gone. I don't have it. 
I mean, yeah. it, it didn't leave right away, but I, right the next day I could feel an alleviation. Now I, I was doing a non-inflammatory diet as well. I'll let people know that, but honestly, it, it, I feel like it was a miracle because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to deal with this a little bit, but I'm going to try to bring it down, you know, take a little of the fire out, but um, it's completely gone. Yeah. <laughs> so and I'm going to give they, you or your angels or your woman or your lady. I'm going to give them that credit. I think um, I reported this to MUFON in 2007 or that uh, when, well, it was actually I reported it in October of 07, but I never was uh, would allow them to my house until February of 08. And they asked me, what do you think this was? I said, angels, I was praying. I was on the river crying out, God, I wanted to die. I won't call in on aliens or nothing like that. I've never thought of such. I was crying out to heaven. Help me. Mm -hmm. And these balls of fire came and took me away for four hours and brought me back. And I wasn't sick anymore. And to this day, I, I do the same thing. I walk out and I say a prayer. And here they come. And we we film them sometimes 35, 40 a evening, sometimes ground level, sometimes five feet away. They come. I had one this last week came flashed way up in the sky. And next time it flashed is 150 feet up. Next time it flashed, it was in the tops of the trees. And the third time it was 10 feet over my head and a friend from Charlotte had come to witness this. And that's how they interact. I mean, it's not something um that doesn't i mean it really changes people they realize well, since i've been reading the book since i've been reading your book and watching your interviews i've been asking like show yourself to me show yourself to me i mean i get all these other powers and we're, they come through me that i'm not the power they come through me um but i've not ever and i've got friends really close friends that have seen orbs and aliens but i've never had the experience ever at all um i do believe in the angels and the gods and the guides uh and i teach my clients how to listen because that's the problem is we don't know how to listen we don't know what the signs are or we're distracted by really not important things in yeah. life that we're obsessed you know with with certain things that we're afraid of or we're blocked so i teach my clients how to listen or what are their signs and they're so simple they're, they're so simple. Some of them are just thoughts. You think they're thoughts in your head. And those are actually messages. But if you ask, um, a lot of times I'll ask for a specific message that I want for reassurance of something. And the next day, I'll get a text. And that'll be my reassurance. So it does work, but we forget. Yeah, and, and i tell you what's important, Holly. Um, and... I tell this to people all the time. I get all these folks that write me and people get in this mindset. They're the Pleiadians or they're the Octurians or they're the Galactic Federation. The reptilians. All yeah, all this. And there's far uh, removed from what it is they're trying to get to interact with them as ever. What do we do? Give us a secret. Um, well, it's humble yourself and understand that they're, they're spirits. They're not aliens. There may be aliens. I'm not saying they're not. I'm sure there probably is stuff like that out there. I haven't experienced that. Um, they, they come and it's like the Bible says, the angels are ministering spirits, that they're here to minister and watch over humanity, watch over all life. They watch over the wildlife. Look at Ezekiel in his book where he writes about his angelic encounter. I mean, what does he see? Two cherubim land and he walks between them and what steps out? Not just a human, but a human with four faces. There was a, a ox, there was an eagle, and there was a, a lion. So what does that mean? Why do the Egyptians have animals on their as their gods, right? Uh, yeah. They'll have little feathers on their heads depicting angelic beings, always. 
So they knew, and we've just been uh, we've lost. We're lost. This whole right humanity has been lost, and um, it's time that we get back to to the um, the truth and to God. If we're going to save this world from the turmoil and the peril that it's in, it can easily be done. I think that that will open us up to a new world. And all this there's darkness, so much faith. There's yeah, there's so much darkness. There's so much suffering. It's 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 unsurmountable. Like it's unbelievable uh, it's what hell. happens yeah. on this earth. I think we're in hell if there is such a thing. Uh, oh my gosh, I didn't know, I didn't know if I should say that to you. I've said this since I was a little kid because I was yeah. born and raised Roman Catholic, and then I kind of denounced it because I started not believing in the books and the texts, and you know, there's stuff that's going on in the Roman Catholic Church that's not that great either. Yeah. Uh, so I was starting to doubt my religion because I was basing it on the, you know, my the the people that were delivering it to me. But I'd always said this is hell. Like this can be heaven too. We well, earth is heaven. People are hell. <laughs> you know, we live in a heavenly, beautiful place that provides us everything we need. Right. But what does it say in um, the book of Job where it starts out by saying, and the adversary. The That's a current term created just, you know, a couple thousand years ago. We're talking eons, right? The Bible says that and lucifer went up to heaven to talk to god to report to him and he said where have you been what's going on with you he said you know where i've been i live on earth i create havoc upon mankind yeah and, and he said busy. i go to and fro throughout the earth creating havoc right and so that's pretty much points the way to where we're living in a place that you can lose your soul here if you and i think the real world is around us i think that the people that have gone on my dad your grandparents or family members loved ones are just watching us from the eternal world or the real world i have thousands of pictures of of orbs around us a lots of them with dogs and animals and people in them clear you can see them in the orbs i take ground level I, I mean i have a ton of this stuff and so you can't not see it and it tongue ties people who try to have explanations so and i can get these at any time pretty much any time i want to hundreds in one or even thousands in one camera shot but i focus more on not on still photography but actual physical videos because mm -hmm. there's a difference in those orbs and the ones that are coming from up here they come down and uh they're the ones looking after us i feel sure this planet i'm so glad you explained that to me one of the questions i was going to ask you is what the difference is between aliens and angels because clearly in your book even though it says ufo of god this is more of an angelic higher being higher power and definitely not aliens absolutely um, but, but people got to understand the reason i put that ufo there was to let people decide on their own i don't try to convince anybody what it is you're seeing yeah or what it is i'm seeing i yeah. keep that close to me and i'll mention it like to you but um, people have to figure on their own, through their own sufferings and their own journeys, what it is they want to believe in. And it's to me, it's not a belief, it's a knowing, because I interact with it. I talk to it. It talks to me. I have proven contact. We have this. We have it. And they know us. Uh, is Jeff Kripal, a friend of mine, he's a, he's a famous uh, scholar. He calls it telepathy through prayer right but whatever it is they uh, they listen they hear me and uh, i've probably gotten three nights this week close to 50 videos in three nights with some of them one of them is going to be on the history channel it was so amazing they're like oh my god can we use that they were here in february and now they're putting something in that that i took and that's to show 
that it just didn't happen in February when they were here. It's ongoing. It never stops. So mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned to that. I'm excited. Some. I'm excited that they're on board and then because the History Channel can be, I stopped watching that because I'm like, you guys aren't showing the real history. <laughs> you guys aren't always showing what's the truth. There's a lot of people that don't trust NASA. A lot of people that think NASA is keeping things from us, uh, not giving us the te technology that we could have, that they're lying to us. What do you have to say about that? I have been in to the most uh, secure facilities on or nothing is more secure than mission control at NASA or launch control they call it in Cape Canaveral nothing uh, not even the White House they stand there with machine guns at the door when you walk in I've been in those places I've been in the astronaut crew quarters where only 300 people in the world have ever been only one U.S. president not one senator has ever been in this place but yet I have why? Why did they do that? Um, I, it's of my belief that only one or two or three people at NASA, maybe more, but I don't think there's more than this. Just you can count on one hand that knows the truth or knows that it's real. Others may think it. But the heads of NASA, that, that when you call in and you ask them, they're telling you what they know because they're not privy to the information. You they see, only know they their compartment. That's it. And yeah. um, so there's a very few people on this planet that is involved in this. And I happen to know at least three of them out of uh, probably a half a dozen. And they're in the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO. That's a secret group that was totally secret until a few years ago. But what does that mean? They have their eyes on the sky. They own all the satellites that are over this earth. They own all the spy planes. And when it's seeing something up there, not even the people flying the machines get privy of what these cameras are seeing. The guys on the ground, just that few I'm talking about, uh, see it all. And they control it. Watching what appears around it. And trust me, every time almost something appears and checks it out, Make sure it's not hostile, not loaded with weapons and all this kind of thing. Because if it is, something might happen to it and has in the past. As so I'll leave that at that. I'm good that I, okay, I have to ask these, <laughs> what you're saying is phenomenal to me. So now we're going into space. We've got all of these other planets. We have other galaxies. The universe as universe, it's universe it just keeps expanding. We have other suns and you know, they've already Kepler has already proven that that he Kepler's in the other galaxy taking pictures of what could be inhabited planets um right. according to the light on there. So has these beautiful beings created other planets with entities like similar to us well i would say if i answered that in either way it would be total speculation and mm -hmm. uh, i don't like to guess at anything which a lot mm -hmm. of people that's what they do they got all these theses postulating theses about you know it's, and then people start believing this right they, they make a comment and all of a sudden this this, this for sure but i i think that life is uh, i think there's what we call the universal creation of life that it is in the fabric and in the it's in everything and it's probably throughout this whole universe uh, and others i don't know i could not tell you yeah um, i focus more on this planet and this earth yeah. and what's here and what i'm experiencing and documenting and let's just say there have been three congressman at my house three and all three have experienced things and um so imagine how far up the chain that goes you know what i'm saying it is is they all are ready to 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 reveal that we're not alone but what is it they don't know i don't think the government knows it. i'm telling what it is they don't know how to tell because they know it's conscience based yeah they know it's based on consciousness, not some physical alien with uh, a ray gun and a flying 
saucer coming from some maybe that's happened but it's not in my purview it's not any of my information that i've developed over 16 years of documenting this 16 years that's two phds in documenting <laughs> this phenomenon well what that is two people other maybe than the government but they came to me nasa came to me and i'm like why are you here first off my family is afraid of the government why are you here why do you need me why you got rockets you got the biggest telescopes you got the the space right. station you got all that why do you need to bar it, a bother some country boy in north carolina and the first thing they looked at me and said we see it we know it's real but it has zero to do with us it's very elusive and it don't talk to us but we know it talks to you and we'd like to study that we'd like to know why it's talking to you and if you would just stay out of the ufo world and stay away from those places where people have all these ideas don't taint your experience with others because sometimes you'll get somebody that uh, and it happens all the time ask me to to um stay out of those places and just let them study me and in, in its innocent form without any outside interference so that drew me away from those places and for most of the my 16 years i've been quiet so that, that indicates since they say they haven't spoken to us they don't come that close to us that right. they haven't studied aliens in roswell and they haven't had clear contact with them as rumors have it amongst the alien community uh gotcha. they haven't had that experience so yours is the closest experience that they've had to other beings that are that are watching over us basically well maybe that's what you know it was indicated to me but you never know what they're doing but i know that the proofs in the pudding if it wasn't a value to them they wouldn't be at my house 13 hours away from oh Cape no Cape, right no they, yeah. they wouldn't even think twice they continue doing what they're doing and i would be the i would i'm a shot i'm you know i'm a loose cannon for them basically um but i keep i, I don't tell everything at all i keep it to myself but it's time for the world to know and the government's beginning to tell it and they just don't know how they don't know how to say that it's conscience based that it's spiritual what does mm. spiritual mean when you say it's a spiritual experience well there's spirits it's not like some guy come out and landed and got out with a suit on and a gun in his hand and said i'm from mars you know show me your leader it's an energy it's, a, it's an energy it's a ball of light it's a spirit there's a creative there's a being in that ball of light sometimes more than one and I have, I have pictures of them where they're two and three in one orb looking at me, back at me as I'm taking their picture. Mm -hmm. So um, I had this orb come out of the sky at Easter of 2019. The spirit of the lady, right? Her energy yeah. came yeah, out of the sky. Book. It's in the book. Yeah. And this is when everything changed. This got everyone's attention, by the way. Um, it was Easter of 2019. I got up to go outside, uh, which I do every night of my life. And it was, it was uh, late, dark already. And when I opened the back door, my back door is only six, eight feet from the water. We live on a pond, mm -hmm. a little cat, my wife and I. And uh, when I opened that back door, I looked straight up and this orb just appears several hundred feet up starts flashing 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 erratically and i knew it saw me i knew it was coming because they do that often but they don't often land right this thing come out of the sky spiraling while rotating came through the tops of the trees on the far side of my pond got to the ground to the bank on the other side and stopped I'm like, oh my God, it, it's coming. It's 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 fixing to get get uh, really exciting here. So I just dropped to my knees. I said, I'm not afraid. 
come, I'm here. Just keep me safe. This orb then started coming to me. And it came to within 25 feet of me on the bank and stopped. Now, this thing is going up and down 10 feet in the air like this. And I could see that it was inside of a translucent tall figure, eight, seven, eight feet tall, at least. You can see his just like the predator you see in the movies. That's what they look like when they come out of the orb. The orb is now inside of this figure. It's like the video I have when the orb came, it flashed. Now here's a six, seven foot tall white figure and the orbs inside of him. Right. So it converts from an orb to a full blown being walking around us. In so this it's like this holographic form comes out of its of light. The orb. And the right. orb is now inside of this form. And I'm looking at it and I take my cell phone and I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. And I'm just, this is going to be it. <laughs> So I went and found, I found video, I actually went to the button, I found it, and I forgot to hit record. But for nine, ten minutes, I'm sitting there, and it's jumping up and down. I'm thinking I'm recording it, right? And then uh, I've I, done that. Oh. When I finally got my brain back with all this happening in front of me, I looked up and said, oh, my God, I didn't hit record. So when I hit the button record, immediately it went whoosh, and it sucked out of sight, darkness, total darkness. It did not and, want to be recorded. But yeah, but not in the glory that it was in. So suddenly flash. So for the next 18 minutes, I filmed this orb over my pond, 25 feet away for 18 minutes, set in there and it would come on and it would go off. And I walked out on my pier. I got within 15 feet of it. It would come on, it would go off. But the crazy thing was, uh, went in totally exhausted and passed out. I was sick real bad at that point, taking chemotherapy and all that then. But I was exhausted. You would have thought I wanted to tell the world, but I passed out. When I got up the next morning, this 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 energy, which I believe was the lady, put the knowledge in my head to warn the people. She said, tell the people trouble's coming. To lock your doors and pack your store up and stay inside. So immediately, that was 2019. I'm like, 2019. I said, Oh my God, I got on the phone and I hadn't done an interview in eight years. I got on the phone and I called everybody I knew. I, I need to do an interview. So I did Richard Dolan, Jimmy Church, a whole host of people. And I began to tell what this, this spirit told me that, uh, and I stopped short of saying the lady. I let people figure that out on their own. But I said, uh, I was told there's trouble coming to store up. And believe it or not, it was COVID-19. And uh, undoubtedly around Easter, it had already been released. Or yep. they knew it was about to be released from that factory. And they came and warned us. Well, let me tell you, that got the attention of some of the, the highest authorities in the land that I knew this and I did it 10, 11 interviews telling this before it ever came in early 2020, but it was already running rampant in 2019. And yeah. we knew it. But it, it, it said a whole lot more and I'll stop short of that. The book tells it. And um, yeah, it's been a, it's a beautiful thing to me, the whole experience. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being that vessel for us. And you're obviously going to continue to be that vessel for us. I have one last question. Um, why did they create us? Well, I, I don't know that at all. Um, but I, I think we're just part of a, a, a chain of life. I don't think we're any more special than the, the alligators in Florida to the the turtles in New York or the, the deer out in California or Colorado or in my backyard. I think we're all special under uh, the eyes of creation or under God, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm not a religious person anymore. I was, I grew up that way. 
Uh, my wife's Pentecostal holiness. Her family is Pentecostal, and they're very strict. If you, I'm closer to God, to the heavens than I have ever been, but I'm not in the church yeah. like mm -hmm. I used to be. Uh, they told me I could never talk about it. If I intended to go to church, I had to drop this whole thing. And I'm like, sorry. I was talking to God, not the devil, when he came in the form of three balls of fire, yeah. always three. And what does that three represent? In all forms of religion, the triad or the trinity. Yeah, uh, yep. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There you go. And or I also, I also wrote down body, mind, and soul. Yeah, it could be. Um, you, can, you can buy the book through an Amazon link there. But yep. you can also find my Instagram, uh, social media stuff, Facebook and all. And I post a few videos on Instagram, probably 50 or 60 out of thousands. I have a new camera called a Psyonix. I got it two years ago. And I just checked uh, recently on my Psyonix app alone. Um and this is what it looks like, a little psionics. This is the app firing up. Oh, okay. I'll tell you this. These are, these are nightly. Each group of these are one night. This is July the 12th. See, there's four. Mm -hmm. Well, anyhow, on the... In your backyard. Number, yeah, this is number one of 2,387 videos. 2,387 videos in 24 months. So that's well over 12, 1,150 a year. And these are, are uh, of orbs that are interacting and communicating. And so they're very, beautiful. they seem very excited to, to be with you and be around you and, and go through you. It seems like they're so excited that this is something they've been waiting for a long yeah. time. They, you know, the energy, uh, has been waiting for for a long time. Uh, that's the end. That's the the impression that I'm getting. That they're just coming over and over again. Like we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Yeah, <laughs> um, okay. You know, I'm just gonna say one final thing before we end. The thank you so much for your time. And I, I hope. I hope. I hope. Um, I'll be able to interview you again, maybe six months or a year from now. Yeah. But you might become so popular then. But um, more than you already are. But you know, humans don't seem to stop doing things unless there's a consequence, you know, right. we're, we're going to do this. We're going to stop doing this because the consequence is more brutal than the advantage. And even the most cruelest things that if there's not really serious consequences and I've always hoped, and ever since I've been watching you, I've always hoped that somehow there's orbs, the spirits, the lady will come and tell us what the consequence is. Yeah. But if you do this damage to other people and to the earth and harm people, something, the consequence is this. Yeah. And well, I don't know if you know what that is, but I hope they give us that message. Well, um, I stopped short of doing that. Um, but really, I don't like to give people want to know what it is. What's the prophecy? What is, I, I, I'm, that's not me. It's not my my job in this. It's just to introduce the phenomenon to the world and let you figure out what it is to you. Uh, if you want it to be a Pleiadian, then that's fine if that's what you want. Uh, but at least I want people to know that it is real and I've documented it and here it is on camera live for you to see. Uh -huh. There's not any doubt in it and and that's my deal. That's what I want to do is just to let people figure it on their own and realize that we're not alone. That there's a mind out there that not only created them, but created us as well. If we didn't come from some amoeba 10 billion years ago. The big bang? Into, yeah, it turned into every living thing on earth. This is, this is just an uneducated answer from people that's supposed to be smart. They just don't have a clue. So they use that lame excuse rather than try to really ponder the real, but we're fixing to change that. And we are, we're changing that very fast. 
Thank you so much. I, I agree with you. I've I've kind of given up. I've had a lot of people ask me, how do you know all this? When I'm doing readings, I get remote, I get clairvoyancy. And my the way I do it is I'm not all about predictions. I'm like, you co-create your world. And I want to help the best that I can to help you relieve blocks, understand who you are as an individual, use energy timelines to co-create your world. It's up to you how you do that. But when people ask me, how do you get all this information? I honestly, I tell them, I don't know. I, re I, I don't have an answer. Why do I look at the map of the sky and I, and I say things that resonate so strongly with you? You've got tears in your eyes. I have no clue where this comes from. I just know it exists. Yeah, it's there and we're all connected to it. Uh, we mm -hmm. all have these psychic abilities. We've just been, um, we've been suppressed and suppressing that, I think, for so long that we've lost that ability. Uh, we, we, but this coming, the knowledge is coming. And Yeah, um, I'm excited. Yeah, it's coming. I'm so excited. Thank you for your time, Chris. Chris Bledsoe, you can find, you. all you have to do is YouTube his name and you're going to see tons and stuff google it you're going to see tons of information go to his instagram you have to buy his book his audio book his physical book whatever works for you you have to find that book because it will change the power it will shift an energy within you that will open up your soul and open up your mind to looking at life a lot differently. I wish every I wish you would sell eight point whatever billion books, <laughs> which meant every single person reads your book because they you should read this book to your kids when they're old enough. You know, this is really important information, and I can't wait for the History Channel to come out. You said it was August first, and mm -hmm. all of the other information. You must be bursting inside because there's so much you can't tell, and you're like. I'm so excited that people are going to yeah. hear this. I'm glad that you're not suffering as much anymore as you always. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad that I found you. I just, um, and I can share this with my audience and hopefully you and I will connect again in a, in several months from now. Bye. You know. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay, you guys, you're going to find this on my Ask Holly Hall, on my YouTube channel, on Apple, on Spotify. It's going to be everywhere in audio and uh, visual. And also I'll put clips on my TikToks. That's where my biggest audience is. I know, I know they're really excited to see some of this. And that will lead you to all of the different places that this will be as well. Thank you yeah. so much, Chris. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate you.